Good morning all. This is Blue. He's a Pomeranian. He's here for a little bit of a haircut today. I'm gonna take most of this off and just leave him with a little layer of fluff. Um, so not quite shaved naked, but somewhere in between. And uh, obviously neaten up the legs and all the little scruffy bits. But uh, give you a few pointers on working on his cut today. Right, handsome boy. So he's already been washed and blow dried, and I always make sure I can go through with the comb completely through the coat before I start trying to do anything with the clippers um, because it keeps them from getting jammed up. Oh boy. So we got him nicely brushed out and all prepped and ready to go. So he's handsome. Uh, come back when I get a little work going on him. Alrighty, so sometimes on these type cuts I have to fiddle between going with a blade and a comb attachment. So this is a <laughs> furry 30 blade. Um, and these guys are the Andis uh, comb attachments. I like them because they lock onto your 30 blade. Um, you can switch them between a 30 and a 10. I always use the tightest teeth I can. I prefer a 40 under a clip, a comb attachment, but I prefer these comb attachments, so I've been dealing with a 30 under them. They're pretty good, but I like them because they're just nicely rounded on the tips. Um, so when you go to work into the coat, some of them are a little pointier and they can actually like poke them in the corners of the you know, groin corners and like just weird places. So I like these because they roll nicely and they don't catch. So this is the number two, which leaves them about a half an inch taller and calls it three eighths, 10 millimeters. So you guys can see that. There we go, three eighths, 10 millimeters. Um, I think it's a little closer to half an inch, but looks like it. And then like I said, with this kind of coat, sometimes the comb attachment's gonna work the best. Sometimes you're gonna wanna get in there with a blade. Like you might do our home attachment. But you're gonna wanna make sure the coat stays fluffed up and not super flat. So, in my opinion, I think we're gonna be happy to actually swap out to a blade. Because I'm just not getting. Uh, let's see, you guys can see this. We're starting to see teeth lines here. And, oh, it's so hard to show. There we go. That's good. But you can see how we're starting to see the teeth lines and the merle's kind of hard to show you whether we're getting a really smooth clip or ah oh, there we go it's a good angle but you can kind of see the teeth lines all through there so i don't think we're getting quite as smooth of a clip as i would like so i'm going to swap this out number number four is currently out of commission i'll have to buy a new one so this will be a little bit more snug um four five but it'll give us a nice See how smoothly that lays. Let's see what you guys are getting on there. So you can see how much more smoothly that's cutting, and it's going to give me a consistent length versus the comb attachment just kind of giving me a little grief and mixing up the length. So when we're working, we usually start kind of along the top side of the dog. We just follow their body. I kind of lay into this point on the clipper and let that part be what connects to the body. And then I will pull and rotate and fidget until the coat, the, the skin is pulled taut. So that the clipper gets to go straight down everything. Go. Some places require two hands, like up here on the neck folds. You pull that back, you get that to tighten out a little bit, and you get a much cleaner clip. My goal is to get it smooth, 100% smooth, the first time over if I can. Because the more times you have to work at something, A, the longer it's going to take you. And B, the different, just every, every time you hit it with a different angle, it's going to cut it a little closer or a little longer. Um, because the way the coat stands up to the teeth. So you always want to be really careful as you're coming over the elbows. Uh, you want to make sure, like I said, I've got him pulled back so that the skin's tight there behind the elbow. And I'm not going to cut up into the groin from here. I'll roll down and cut downwards. So again, always follow in the direction of the coat's lay and always keeping the skin taunt underneath. So here even my finger's pulling the coat up here so I can get that a little bit tighter. Boy. He's a little bit straight in the rear so he uh, has a little bit of trouble with angulating his legs. That's why I keep picking off and moving him around. And then I tend to, on the rear end, go with the coat a couple strokes. And then, oops, here we go. Show you on the other side. 
Yeah, you don't get your nine shot. Don't worry. I got that out of the way. So I'll go with the coat a couple strokes. And then I'll come up in reverse. But I stand the blade up a little bit so it's not super close. And get some of that coat to come back towards their belly. And then go back and forth a couple times. There we go. Boy. And I almost use the blade as a brush up and then fall it back down. And then I like to pull the forearm forward so I get that whole bit of armpit out of the way. And again, follow the way the coat's growing. Come back. Good knowledge of where to stop for on a boy because he's got bits down there. Uh, that comes with practice and paying attention. Um, the arm, kind of roll that forward. I'm going to use the scissors mostly on that down there. Um, I tend to also bring the armpit up and push in, and that sets that bit of flap that the armpit has tight to the body so then I can go up under and work down. And I'll come back to that again once I have a 10 blade on here to do the belly. Um, I always touch up the armpits too so that they're snug to the body. But a 10 is going to be a little safer where there's flaps of skin because the teeth are closer so they're not as likely to let hair get in or skin get in and get cut with the hair. Again, armpits, I'm rolling the hair over and making sure that I've got some tension so that the skin's tight and not loose. It's one of the easiest places to nick. But yeah, um, let's see you. Can we get to your face for a sec? Get the bits around your face. Oh boy. I think pretty much is in sort of a boo kind of cut. Oh boy. So I take it up to the back of his skull and his cheeks and then just round and blend it all back in. Yeah, buddy. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> that was so hard to get them where you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Good boy. There you go. I just come and find his jawline and just set the blade in, watching for his ear because I know that's there. So I'm not going to go any closer to the ear. And then to the top of the head, same thing with the coat back. I'm just going to kind of lay the blade in just behind his skull. Boy, and then I'm going to use this line that I've made to come down and around the sides. So stay. Good boy. And then that way I know. But I'm not getting the ear because the ear's behind my covers. Good boy. That's a bit good boy, aren't you, Lou? Over here on this side. Little ear forward. Set the cover down and then go in. And you just use that to lay yourself out a line so that it's easier to follow when you come through with the scissors. You got a little bit of pain edge. Good boy. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side of him and then we'll bring you back. Right, little blue, we got both sides of your body shaved down. And let's see. So next thing's next, we gotta get his little undercarriage worked out with the number 10 blade and his feet pads. So as I was saying before, I like to get their armpits kind of neatened up. So I take the arm up out parallel and push it in. You can usually get a good little bit of neaten up right in there. Boy, put it on parallel and push it in, and that pushes all that little hair down. Boy, stay still. Now, parallel and back in. Boy, I know it's not in the field. Good boy. So it helps me get a lot of that work down there. Good boy. And then we take it up. And that also gives us one more access to check out our pits. And then we do the grind up your area. I usually take it from a little bit below the bottom of the rib cage. Good boy. And again, I'm going to put her flat to him and I'm kind of laying more this part to him and let the blade do the work. Good boy. And I got to watch out. We're going to have little skin flaps there so we don't want to get too close to those areas. And watch out for his little boy bits. Stay. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Again, he's kind of straight and narrow in the hips, so he's going to have a little bit of trouble standing up and a little trouble with the angle they need to get to. So we'll have to bounce him around and work from a couple different ways if we need to. Good boy. Let's see him just let us get out of the middle. Good boy. So some get done from the front. I pretty much go to the 
to go to all four sides of them when I'm working on their undercarriage and manscaping, if you will. <laughs> um, oh, I helps me get everything out under the tail. Good view, good enough. Come up through here. And they come straight up about the width of a blade. Then this be over the bullet. Sometimes I'll even stand the blade up a little bit so that I've got more distance between the cutting part of the blade and where the skin is. Good boy. Spin it around one more time. I know you have a harder time on this side, don't you? Okay, good boy. Good boy. Conscientious of where skin and that we don't wind up getting too close in those areas. There you go. Thank you. Oh boy. Alrighty. So that's the undercarriage. Good job, Blue. You did so good at that. Yeah, I know. You have a hard time getting me taking your little feet and your parts out from under you, don't you? Alright, so next is feet pads. I almost always bring the leg back. And I use a 40 blade for this, usually 40 or a 30. Um, 30 is a little bit safer, but it's not going to get quite so thorough a trim. Um, and again, I've got a lot of practice knowing where. I would never take a 10 to in here because the teeth are too wide. Uh, the 40 are nice and tight, so they're not so likely to nick something, but they're also really close to the end of the blade, so you, if you get anything within the blades, it's got the potential to nick it. So again, I like to bring the foot up, kind of compress the whole foot across the palm of my hand, so it keeps the toes kind of inward and doesn't spread much, so you don't have to worry so much about dealing with those little clips, because they've got like a little clipper right there. So we just want to be careful. If I go to between the pads, I always lean towards the outside and pivot up towards the inside so that I'm not digging into here and getting that. Oh boy. Okay. Tail out of the way, just kind of get used to tucking it in with your thumb or pinky finger or whatever is available. Good boy. Basically, everything that goes below the foot gets trimmed off, below the feet pads. So when it stands on the ground, it's a little bit easier to work that stuff off. You've got kind of long nails, so I have to get in there and get those short too. These guys are my favorite. They're Miller's Forge, and apparently they have a number on there. I don't know if the thing, thing will give me a focus or not. But Miller's Forge. Anyway, the number says 743. Um, so these are my favorites. So just what I've gotten used to using over the years. There's a sweet spot you can find, but just slide down the toenail and you just kind of feel a hook and you can usually hook there and it's usually pretty good. And then I, good boy, you're so sweet, aren't you? take the toe by the bottom of the foot pad and press the top of the toenail, kind of like you're pressing out a cat nail, and it gives you just a little bit of extra stability when you go to trim them. And I use my finger behind the blade as kind of a guide so I have something to push the toenail into, and know if I push it too far to help keep me, help me set the length. Uh, again, if you're doing that, be careful you don't snip your finger. <laughs> oh boy probably start all these with a disclaimer, it's like <laughs> sharp instruments and 
living flesh. Be careful. <laughs> this isn't exactly a tutorial. This is just a how I do it. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, next up is a Dremel. I use Dremel Micro. I currently have a little diamondy bit that I found on Amazon for about 15 bucks or so. Um, it comes on at setting 15. I usually turn it down to 10 for the little guys. And you just want to rotate. You can't see much of that, but I go for the back of the nail and then the front of the nail and just kind of rotate around the whole thing. You so cool up and do the way, aren't you? You're so sweet. <laughs> I've got lots of practice. Um, good boy. Thank you, thank you. This one. Good boy. Thank you. Again, I'm using the my wrist there to keep his tail out of the way. If I feel it start to adjust, I'll stop doing the work and move his tail a little more securely. But, all right. So that's all those bits, Hi, buddy. And then we'll get to the scissor work. So we'll start with the front foot. I usually try to stay in the habit of picking one corner and working my way all the way around. Um, my brain works better by habit. So I try to do things repetitively the same way because then my brain kind of locks it in on autopilot and I don't have to work so hard to remember, did I do this, did I do that? Because it just kind of all gets done in order. all the hair up and then just start working across the top I'm using a eight and a half inch curved shear um, this is actually a guide shear he had a few of the um, these are super gators yeah super gators he had a couple that he had made with the offset thumb and I went and put a double swivel from shark fin on it so it doesn't exactly fit in there properly but it gives my hand the freedom to not have to close so far and as I open my thumb out and close it you see how much that swivel changes so that allows my hand more freedom to move naturally and not be so forced into position and again after 20 something years of grooming dogs um, my hands were starting to hurt with the scissor work so this has made a big difference on that sides. Mostly where he's fluffy is going to be down the back of this front leg. Boy. So, that forward. And we know there's an elbow here. We know there's skin flaps. So just work carefully around all those places. Uh -huh. It's okay. Want to do it standing down? That's fine. You can do it there too. So, try my hardest to work with what's comfortable for the dog itself, not necessarily what gets me in the best position. I do like to have my dogs trained to be relatively um, compliant, but at the same time, um, not every dog's built the same or stands the same or has the same tolerance for anything. So I also give them a decent bit of leeway when it comes to some of the things that they want to do their way. If they, you know, there's, you can kind of tell the difference between the dog saying, ouch, that hurts, versus the dog saying, hey, I want my foot back. Um, and sometimes even if they just want their foot back, like you can still work around them. So I, I do what I can to keep them as comfortable as possible while still having a dog that understands to be compliant and understands that I need to do the things I need to do. Um, again, push everything down. You guys see what I'm doing from there well enough. is outside of the foot pad. It's trimmed off the ground. Once you have that done, you have the halfway foot. You got to get all this stuff up off the top. And we're going to want to get this hawk and shapes on his joints all the way around and trimmed. It's a little scruffy everywhere. So here. The reason I like to use a curve so often is the backs of the legs need a curve. And then I can still set this in and just kind of lay the scissors down right. 
and still get that relatively straight. But most parts of the dog have some curvature and others, so that's why I kind of gravitated toward the curved as my go-to's. I keep straights on hands for when I'm doing something that's fancy that really needs those great column legs or whatever, but most of what I do is more soft and rounded than straight lines. And there's some tricks for using your curves to cut a straight line. Oh boy. So, much better, right? Got it nice and neatened up. Check for all sides. Oh boy. Make sure that inside of the leg's nice and neat. And then again, I tend to just rotate around the dog. Start on one corner, work my way around. I try to stay on the same piece for a while. Um, you know, get all, all the nails done, not each foot individually, nail, trim, everything. And try to stay with the same piece of equipment and work my way around the dog. How about that? That's a good way to say it. Good boy. Seems to be the most efficient way to go about it. Sorry, my hands are really bad, guys. <laughs> The dog says he's facing this direction, not that direction. So again, I try to figure out what the dog needs in order to let me do the best job I can do. So rather than having an argument with them about facing this way, I'll work on as much as I can with them facing that direction, and then I'll turn them around where I need them to be once I need it. a little bit so you can see that helps you able to turn around a little better. Here we go. Keep your support. Thank you, buddy. Good boy, Lou. Here's one of those places where I can use the curves to make a straighter line is I just come at it because the leg itself has a curvature around so I just come at it from there and just take a snip 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 straight down snip 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 straight down Boy, and let the curve be cutting this direction so I'm making a straight line here but letting the curve do its thing and make sure that it's more of a column leg because obviously you're not doing a four-sided square you want to make it rounded anyway even on those straight lines and then with using the back of the curve you can just kind of rotate it as you trim
move the camera. It's just where you're gonna lay no matter what. <laughs> you're a goofy boy. Alrighty, uh, city dog. So brushed all the hair back and I tend to lay my hand down so it gets me the ability. And again, I know his ear's there and I'm cutting very softly that direction. I'm not gonna go nip. I'm just gonna kinda let the blade kinda push the hair out or push the ear out of the way there a little bit. Um, Pull the ear forward. I try to let the head stay where it is so you can pull the ear and it pulls all that. I just want just the ear to kind of come forward and let the rest of that hair relax and stay in the right place. Good boy. And come down around his jaw. Good boy. Nope. I know all these weird angles and things I have to do. too tight on the cheeks so his face still kind of looks foxy and cute but it blends into the body and doesn't look enormous compared to the rest of them. All right bubs, good boy. And last step, and he's going to be getting his little tail brushed out. I'm totally happy to let him just hang out laying down because he's decided that's his favorite way to get work on. <laughs> still holding that end of the tail so mostly I'm just pushing the hair down and I've got a finger set and my uh, arm my hand set so I can adjust 
and manipulate the tail and work on it. There we go. So mostly everything falls straight down and that helps us get a better little bubble brush. Good boy. And then shake it out. See what hangs loose. On this side. I'm not sure if I mentioned when I was... Good boy. There we go. Okay. So nice. Um, when I clip them, I almost always clip just a little band around the tail because it just helps A, keep the poop from getting stuck to that little bit of hair, and then it gives you something to kind of blend off of to get the tail away from their tush a little bit better. And I'm noticing a line that can be trimmed up. Good boy. All right. And that's a cute new. He's a very cute new. You want to say goodbye to your new friends? Say goodbye to your new friends. He's your happy boy. He's just a sweet little dude, aren't ya? That's a good boy. Yep, that's Blue getting a haircut. Oh, did you approve? How'd you end up on the floor? You're usually up here helping me. <laughs> All right, until next time. Have a good day.